can you be sure that you're doing the right thing when you have a loved one passed away that owns real estate? Now, you know that if you make a mistake or if a mistake is made, it could lead to some nasty family arguments or worse yet, feel like you're wasting away the wealth that you know your loved one really proudly built up over the years. And the sad part is before the ink is even dry on that paperwork that gives you the authority to act as an executor or administrator, your phone, your email, your text is blowing up with offers from friendly investors who want to make life easier and sell your home fast at a discount. So in today's video, I'm gonna give you five tips to give you more peace of mind of how to act in the way that honors the memory of your loved one as well as preserves the value of the asset that may be some of the among the largest that they have in their estate. So let's get started. I'm Veronica Woods and welcome back to the Real Estate Wisdom Channel where we provide market updates for Philadelphia and suburban Delaware County. We also provide videos about how to build and maintain profitable rental property portfolios. If you want to reach out to me and talk one-on-one -on -one about a challenge on your plate today, feel free to send me a text, email, phone call, and all my contact information is listed below this video. So let's jump into our first pitfall of selling an inherited property. Mistake number one is not filling out the proper paperwork at the county's Department of Wills to give you the full authority to make decisions about any real estate your loved one has. So just because it's your mother's home doesn't not automatically give you the permission as a child, even the only child, to make decisions. Just like the banks, you need to get a piece of paper that defines your role in the estate's administration. You want to be sure that when you sign that purchase contract, you really have the full authority to transfer ownership out of your loved one's name. Mistake number two is not confirming whether there's any liens against the property early. Now, unless you're managing the personal finances of your loved one, it may be hard to have visibility whether they're past due taxes or any loans outstanding beyond you know, a traditional mortgage that they may have been paying every month. You don't want that surprise late in the game when you've already agreed on a, on a price to sell the property with another party. So a good thing to do is to do a title search. That will highlight any outstanding lien, even the ones that you may not know. I had a client that, um, didn't have just a traditional mortgage. It was some loan that his mother took out unbeknownst to the family. The company that held the loan actually went out of business. So we had to go through a process for the defunct company or the uh, title title rep to take that lien off off the the report because the company was no longer in business and the underwriter felt comfortable. But again, Having visibility of that lien early enough before closing was critical. Mistake number three is not having an open discussion amongst the heirs before trying to sell the property. Usually the person who comes and engages me as a real estate broker is the quote unquote responsible one. And they always tell me, oh, nobody's going to question my decisions. I'm the one that has the money bring to the table to kind of get through this estate process. But that can be a really faulty assumption. What if everybody isn't on the same page with selling the property or keeping the property? What if they're questioning that you are the person that should be making that bottom line decision? Or it could be as simple as maybe one person wants to live in the property. And if so, if the property 
um, is jointly should be jointly owned by a number of heirs, then the person who wants to stay in the property would have to buy out the other heirs in order to make things whole. So these are good things just to kind of get out in front of early in the process. Mistake number four is not keeping up with the expenses of the property. If you are the administrator or executive, your duty is to preserve the property until the estate is settled, which means that you'll have to continue to pay the mortgage. You should also be continuing to pay insurance. You should be continuing to keep up with the upkeep of the property, including cutting the lawn, you know, maintaining the heater and main, main kind of mechanicals of the property. You may even, if, if someone's not going to be living in the property for a long term, you may even have to change the type of insurance you get. There's a vacant property insurance that's usually more appropriate if a property um, stays vacant for a longer period of time. Sometimes it's prescribed by the carriers, you know, more than 30 or 60 days, technically you're supposed to switch to a vacant property insurance. But again, you're, as the executor or administrator, you should be overseeing, main, preserving the value of the property by proper maintenance. Mistake number five is not getting enough help to clear out the personal belongings of a loved one. It can be quite overwhelming because you really don't know like how much stuff you can pack in the house, not to mention if there's an attic or a garage. And it could be quite overwhelming to get in those, what is it, keep, sell, or donate piles. And as well as it could be enticing when you hear an offer from an investor and say, hey, don't worry about it. Just take a few things and we'll take care of the rest. Now, taking care of the rest involves taking less money on the back end from the selling of your house. Now, that could be okay. You could kind of think about the resources you have and the and the, the discount and it, it may make sense to you or an alternative is to get a organizer you know hire a estate auction company um leverage you know company or donation third-party companies like purple heart where it just makes it easier to just kind of grab bags from your house and you get a tax write-off that tax write-off could be with the donations could help you financially at tax time so don't kind of leave that tax benefit on the table um, by not wanting to do the work to clear out the house but the bottom line is most people need help either coordinating family members if you don't have reliable family members to get things done in a short time window and that's another i guess bonus tip of kind of give yourself a reasonable amount of time. Um, you know, depending on your circumstances, generally, you know, no one's saying that you have to clear everything out in a month, but, you know, figure out if your time horizon to get the property on the market, how that matches up with the resources you have to get things done, and then make a decision. Before we wrap up, I do want to mention two more points about inheritance taxes specifically. So inheritance taxes are the taxes that heirs pay against the assets that they inherit. Pennsylvania is one of six states, only six states in the country, that imposes a tax at the state level for heirs. Now, I'm not an attorney, don't play one on TV, so I'm not going to get into the nuances of um, inherited property through trusts, wills, or through probate, but here are two things to consider. One is the time to plan to pay less inheritance taxes is when you're alive. Most people who have managed in the state for, for others vow to do better for their children. That means talking to an estate planner early on just to kind of map out so that your heirs aren't caught into caught in a bad place with figuring out how they're going to pay any owed inheritance taxes. Two, be careful to 
get the estate law for not only the place where the loved one passed away, but also each state where they had property. They may all have different nuances. They may all require some sort of estate administration process. And you just want to make sure you're, you're following the, the proper procedure. Now, if you want more information about, you know, how you should decide whether you should keep or sell an inherited property, you'll want to watch the video that's appearing on the screen now. As always, thanks for watching and happy investing.